Greetings, family, and welcome again to Usha. Here, me and I are here to share with you guys what we have discovered. Everything is about discovery, so today we're going to be talking about the state of our health. I think that is something that we really need to work on. You know, I mean, uh, apart from all the things that I talk about, about uh, on an energetic level, about our the spirit part of us, that never is going to work as long as your body is sick because now all your attention is going towards your body trying to heal itself. And the biggest deterrent to our body's healing itself is our own damn thoughts. We have to change our whole entire idea or thoughts behind sickness. There's nothing that can come into your body that you can't get rid of. We've been told all oh, by the so-called experts, doctors, whatever, that there are certain things that you can't do nothing about. That's a lie. You can do something about any and everything. There's just a process. We have to be willing to put the work in for our own health and vibrance. We have to be willing to put the work in. That's nobody else's responsibility but our own. I can't expect somebody to vital, revitalize my body when I live in this body. I go to them and ask them, well, what do I need to do for this? I don't know. I live in this body. The state of our health is really poor right now. I, I mean, when I look at what's going on in these cities and how the brothers and sisters are looking, man, we look like little bowling pins bouncing down the street. That is insane. There's no reason for that. The only individuals that I see that are not all the way to the other side, mostly are the young folks. Cause they haven't gotten there yet, but they're getting there faster than we, we was getting there. So we have to make a change, not only for us, but for our children. But you know what? I want I wanted to just take a minute to like pause and think about that. Like, so when we were in slavery and and so called, we weren't free, right? Here we are, slaves, but we were in better physical health than. We are now. Remember, the mental extends to this physical, right? right? So here a person is in bondage and working for free and so forth and so on in the heat of the day. And they're able to maintain a better mental health, which produces a better physical health than the so-called free people of today. I tend to miss data no better. Why is that? Because they was active. Yeah. They was not sitting around eating and looking at TV. Not just being active, they also maintained their own gardens. Right. Where they grew a lot, a of, the lot of the food for themselves. Well, what I'm saying is that it was uh, it was a whole. Yeah. They were active, they grew their food, they cooked their food. They lived their life. And then, but wait. By what they had available. And, but, and then, even after slavery, when we go into, you know, Jim Crow era and even beyond that into the Civil Rights Movement, we still look like, I, when we watch documentaries and things like that, the people still, the women are fit. M most of the women are fit. Most of the men are fit. And then we go to today and you look at some, and you look at pictures of today and it's, whoa. It's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of obese. I mean, to be quite frankly, it's a lot of obese people running around and assuming a natural mental health. Like, you know, and I think about Lizzo when I say this. Like, Lizzo is a brilliant young lady, right? You know, she's an accomplished musician. She's a superstar, you know, some, some would say. And then, but Lizzo, you know, promotes you know, the health of being obese. 
and the bottom line is is that she is quite obese and she can stand to lose some weight you know that's controversial you know people don't like to hear it's that it's not controversial it's but, real but your organs are telling you it's a bit much and you are fabulous now you can be even more fabulous if you drop a few damn pounds exactly when you allow yourself <laughs> the opportunity to have a vibrance flowing through you. Yeah. Because as long as you allow your what can I say your hunger and your insatiable appetites to drive you you're going to drive yourself to destruction. Mm -hmm. Why I say that? Because we find ourselves eating garbage. Just garbage. You cannot sustain this body consuming garbage all the time. You can sustain it, but it won't be a good sustaining. It's not good. Because be I, I have seen, but what I'm saying is, is I've seen some quite obese people live into, you know, into yeah, their but 70s. Look at them. And they they their, do, and look how they be. They, so, they be having all kind of rashes on them. They yeah, but just, I'm just I mean, saying just, that's just, not, that's not, and that's I'm not, not saying they're living. I said they're sustaining. Sustaining they're what we're here for. That's what we that's what we why talk. That's why we are having this discussion yeah. about the state of our health. Because yeah. just sustaining it's not off enough. of medicine and taking all these drugs and, and having to suffer all these aches and pains because of what? Because of our own ignorance? I mean, are we content with being ignorant? Because we living in the age of knowledge. Ignorance is no excuse anymore. So, I'm asking you guys, what is it that you want in this life? Nobody just can sit there in front of me and tell me, I want to be fat. I want to be obese. I want to have trouble having, moving around. Most big people, I watch them. They get up, they walk from here to where them stairs are over there, and they're already sweating. they tired. You're putting all that pressure on your lungs. You're putting all that pressure on your colon. You're putting all that pressure everywhere on your body. All Matter of fact, things. some folks carry two, three people with them. Not just one. You just think about just carrying somebody around on your back all day. Yeah. I mean, uh, 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 even your child. You can take your child only weighs 75 pounds. And a lot of y'all is like 150 pounds overweight. And you put that child on your back. And you go about your day and see how far you're going to get. And yet we can't go ahead, man. No, I was just saying, you know, because it's it doesn't happen instantly, right? People learn to carry that weight over time, over the days as they put it on. And so it becomes a process and you forget what it felt like when you didn't have all that extra weight. No, they look Don't, at pictures of themselves and go, Oh, I remember. I'm gonna get like that again. That's a lie. It's not a lie. It's a lie. It's not a lie. It's a lie. And you can do it. All you have to do is decide that you want to. That's why I'm saying it, it ain't going to never cliche, change shit. It sounds cliche, but if, if that's really the bottom line of it all. You can do it. All you have to do is decide that you want to do it and then do it. You know, you got to put action behind those words. You got to put action behind the thought. And so just like you put action into eating, you can put action into not eating. It really is a choice. And it's all up to you. And so, and don't be hard on yourself, but challenge yourself and do better. And I say this is a person who has, you know, had a, a couple of pounds on that I didn't desire to have on. And it was up to me to make a change. And so that's what I did. And it's just as simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just as simple as that, okay? <laughs> it is just and, as simple and, as yeah, that. Yeah, when you do it, when you do it, yes, it's just as simple as that. But it, when you saying it, it ain't that simple. If you don't do it, it's just as simple as that. But that's just the, that's the formula. That That's the formula. And people think it's a secret, and it is no secret. And it is no magic pill. And that's what you find with, I, I remember when, uh, you know, a bunch, it would, you know, in the black community and still now, like everybody was getting tummy tucks. And a lot of the women, you look at the numbers, 
of women who got tummy tucks and liposuction who got fat again who had big ass stomachs again you know because hey you can cut it off all you want to if you got a problem eating it's gonna show and so your body will remember again even after you cut it off and then you'll have to do the same process over again it is in you to make a change you gotta make a change so again we're talking about the state of our health yeah and as a people and you know I grew up around big mamas I watched my grandmother and my auntie just blow up like balloons yet right before she passed she had lost all that weight why because she wasn't able to do what she wanted to do anymore so all of it just fell off but at that point she was already you can say at the stage of no return because she had allowed herself to go so far with eating garbage because you know my family grew up in New Orleans. Uh, I was born in New Orleans. My family from New Orleans. My grandma from Mississippi. So we all Southern folks. So you know what that means. They was eating straight garbage. My grandmama cooked beans. They had to have ham hocks. All this stuff in it. And, and, and then you eating beans now. That's saturated in pork. White rice. Why? And my grandmama, you could not bring no doggone wheat bread in the house. She wanted white bread. You better bring me some Weber's. Wonder bread. That would have worked. You better get some Wonder bread. It was a. It was almost against the law to bring something dark into the house. But that's what happens to us when we get that sickness in our body because it affects our brain. No, when we allow marketing to take control. It's still a sickness, baby. It's because marketing. When, when, it's also the availability look, of products. This I is what's in the store. I don't give a shit about marketing. I have, have been influenced by marketing all my life. Yeah, here yeah, I am. Right, but it's what's available in the store. I mean, for a long time, you didn't see different variations of bread. It was only white bread. And no, then we, we think not. about we And we think about... The, the, the on-flux in the 70s of all of these different GMOs, fake corn, fake vegetables, we did not know. We were a test study and we didn't know. That, that and, and, and I just want to say, and that was then, and we still managed to be a lot smaller than we are now. We introduced that to our children, and now we're in the age of information. If you don't know something about how to eat better or do better, is your fault. There's too much information out there. There's too much going on that you can just ignore everything and be like, oh, I can eat whatever I want and things will be fine. We know that that's not the truth. Why? Because your body tells you. You start aching and this and that, different things going on. And it's not so, only about the eating part. It's the, it's, it's the mental part that plays a big ass role in our sickness. Okay. Because we allow ourselves to believe the lies that are told to us out of somebody's mouth who we say we trust to know what's going on inside of us when we live in these bodies. Nobody knows what's going on inside of you better than you. And we go and look outside of ourselves and go, well, I don't know what's wrong with me. I feel like this. I feel like that. And then they give you some dumb diagnosis. And then you go tell everybody about this dumbass diagnosis. And what you're doing? you <laughs> perpetuating the lie. Because it's a lie. I want to say it again. Everything that they've told you is wrong with you is a lie. But once you accept it as the truth within yourself, it, it becomes it reality. It manifests itself inside of you. Yeah. We got, before we go, we have a, a comment from A lot of the, the mind train that we have came back from that slavery stuff, especially Mississippi. Um, they gave them the fact. They gave them the Lord of everything. They gave them the worst of the The lives. scraps. That's it. And then they they just repeated that from generations to generations. The fat bag, the pick of tips, the ham hocks, all of that stuff. I know. Was still the bacon grease. All of that stuff was used to um, put in the beans, the collard greens, the mustard greens to give the flavor. 
and they just didn't understand what that was doing and what it took away from the best of what they were feeling. But and that, but wait, a minute, that and that's why I said exactly what I said earlier. When this is the age of information, right. it's too many avenues available for us that before we just had encyclopedias and word of mouth. We right. was doing what our mothers did and our grandmothers did, but that's not today. And and now and even before and forever and all time, the kitchen is the healing place of the woman for her family. It's not even about the man. It's the woman for her family. Where do the children learn how to eat and what to eat, how to prepare it? From us. Right. And so if we're in the kitchen cooking up trash and we haven't educated ourselves to know what we should be teaching these children, then shame on us. And I'm talking to all you mothers out there. Your kitchen is your medicine cabinet. And it's up to you when you decide to have children to decide what you're going to teach them to eat, how to eat, and so forth. And I remember being, you know, I, I, I was responsible for that in my home. You know, I didn't just want to, and so what, what do you have to do? You have to seek information and knowledge about it. And so if you just only listen to what you've been taught, then again, shame on you. It's too much information out there. Right. Learn something, apply something, and give your children something better then what you do? Because of course our parents did the best they can do, but are we doing the best we can do? Is that is that the kind of mothers we are today? So we gotta teach our babies that the, the kitchen is our home. The kitchen is our medicine cabinet, not our home, it's our medicine cabinet. So heal your children and then I'm always sharing and was showing the children and even when I don't see what I taught them represented in them. I'm like, I taught them. I showed them what it, what you need to do to be a woman and a mom, if you want to have children, in the home, in the kitchen. <laughs> I don't know. I might have something else to say. Hey, anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm a chef. Go ahead. Let me know if you're in the water. If you don't want to ask for that, then you can put it in the book. Absolutely. One thing they don't want to do is read. Everything they want to read. Um, they want to learn from Facebook these days, Instagram, um, YouTube. Everything but going through actual research. You don't really learn research until you go to college. I learned how to do a research paper in high school. So the difference that I see in the young people today as mothers, whew, we got a lot of work to do. So, and I, I just want to, I want to add this. Yes, that is a common saying. And at the time, technology wasn't where it is today. So they couldn't say if you want to hide something, hide it in, you know, obscure places on YouTube. Or they got audio books now. Or, or, so, right. or so forth. <laughs> so they wouldn't, you know, they didn't use that language because it wasn't available then. But now that it's available, we can learn from YouTube. I'm on a, I learn a lot of things on the internet. Is our books um, obsolete? No. Yes, we can still learn from a book. And yes. And then really, it's not really the spirit, it's not really the, the actual saying of that it's in the book, it, a book, is is the spirit of it saying that if you want to hide something, move it out of um, mainstream media and make a person go look for it. Go seek knowledge. That's really the spirit of the, the statement. So we can apply it to everything and every day because you can do a Google search, and, and we've done it plenty of times, and Google is actually wrong. Sometimes. It's saying <laughs> some wrong stuff, and you know, you can ask somebody challenge you with Google, and you're like, it's wrong. And they will tell you, no, it's right, because Google printed it. Right. But, you know, at, you, you have to know to know. You know? You're like, I don't care what Google says, it's wrong. Uh, I want to share something with y'all, something I discovered too recently about the passion fruit leaf. This is a passion fruit leaf. 
a lot of you guys know what passion fruit is. That's that fruit that grows on the vine that normally goes down folks' fence and it has some have the orangish yellow looking little fruit on it. They fuzzy and other ones have the shiny greenish purplish looking when it gets ripe. And but, on the inside it's a bunch of seeds, right? Right. But the passion fruit leaf is a pot. This is a powerful little thing here. I mean, it's powerful. Me and her ate some this morning. Mm -hmm. This thing is anti-inflammatory. That means it takes inflammation from your body. It's a sterilization. It sterilizes. It takes harmful bacteria. It kills harmful bacteria that's in your body. This leaf. This leaf helps to balance your blood sugar. Man, this leaf is... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say a saying <laughs> that a lot of y'all may know, some of you may not. It says, for the herbs of the fields and the leaves of the trees should be for the healings of the nations. We can't, you know, we major in herbs a lot, but there's mushrooms, there's leaves, there's bark. There's so many things fruit. out there to help us. Fruit. Yeah. The very, I mean... Like they said, it's medicine all around us. Yet, we, out of our teaching, what we've been taught, believe that the doctor knows better than everybody when the doctors are sicker than us. And I say they're sicker than us because they're sick and they're going to sit here and tell you what to do to heal yourself when they can't heal their own damn self. They don't take half the things that they're telling you to take. They do that because they make money off of prescriptions. It's a it's a racket. Mm -hmm. And who's suffering from that racket is us. Why? Because we don't believe what comes out of our own mouth. We don't believe the things that's been part of our life from the time our ancestors been on this planet. There was no hospitals. There was a time they wouldn't even accept black folks in hospitals. When they was. Yet, we was doing quite well. And now here we have all these hospitals. We have all these clinics. We have all this stuff. And we dying like flies. That should say something. That should say something to you. We take these stupid ass vaccines because they tell us to. Man, look. I'm going to say it again. These animals that uh, I see around us all the time, they don't have need of not a damn thing. What make us so needy? That idea that's been planted in our mind is killing us. We have to start trusting ourselves. And you know what? And on the trust factor of ourselves, it's like taking a flight from a pilot who's never flown. You know, it, until a person can exemplify, you know, what they say, then it's really all trash. It really is for naught, right? So if you are a doctor, then you should be a healer. We should see and know that you healed plenty, and not just plenty, but yourself. So if you have a doctor who is coming in <laughs> and, you know, out of breath and asthmatic and this and that, oh, okay, well, wait a minute, doc. Like, it looks like you have some more work to do. You know, it's not it's not all the application, you know, on another person. I, and then not even a doctor. Let's say you're taking a financial literacy course and the person is in bankruptcy. Well, doesn't look like I should be taking too much financial advice from you. I need someone who is a financial genius if I'm taking a financial literacy course from them. So same thing with the body, you know, and the expert in that is us. Living it, we living it now for real. We, I mean, you know, I am what I am. I do the things that I know help me to maintain vitality. That's it. We are beings of energy, generating energy. When we're sick, our energy wanes. It's not pulsating anymore. Why? Because we're internalizing disease, disease. This ease cause us to not generate the energy that we need to generate to keep ourselves vibrant. When you look at youngsters, they be running everywhere they go. 
Endless energy. And what happens is that that energy that you see was the energy that was in you that you allowed to what? Dissipate. Through what? Madness. Why? Why do I say madness? Because we find every kind of dumb thing to extend our energy in and we forget to put that energy back within ourselves. That energy is to support your life. So we can't take that for granted. That's something that we have to become more aware of. You know, it's no, it's no more that it's about things. It's about us. It's about us being the best human being that we can be. The state of our health is everything. Because your brain cannot even take the messages that's trying to get to it when it's in a state of chaotic turmoil and pain. Why? Because the rest of your body is hurting. Your brain is part of that. So we have to start healing how we think about what we're doing as far as to heal ourselves. Uh, I got these leaves. I mean, you can have some, but I want you guys to take some of these leaves with you. And you can get some of that thermal water that's running right down the center and let them just soak in there and drink that. Put it in a cup. Hey, <laughs> it's going to do amazing things for you. No, serious, because... When we get information, it's about putting that information to use that yeah. that right. Right. helps us. Right. Because we don't know until we do it. I've seen a many a times giving people herbs. I watch a young lady's auntie's dying. She was dying. Pom said, gave me all the herbs that I needed for her. He said, hey, man, give her this. I was like, all right. Hey, take these herbs. They're going to heal you. She looked at me, she said, I can't take that. I got to take him to my doctor first. And he, and you know, he got to approve that I can take them. This, was, this is what the lady told me. That same week, she had to go in for chemo. And they overdosed her with chemo and killed her. Killed her. Look, I don't know how much, how, how, no other way to say what I'm saying, but the spirit gave her opportunity to live. And she trusted in what? Man. It says, put not your trust in man. Because man don't know what the hell he doing most of them. But is that not putting your trust in, is that putting your trust in man or it was just your time to go? No, you, that's you putting was, your trust in man because she had a choice. So she, now, had she chose the herbs and died, then, yeah, then if she But wait that, a minute, but if since... If she did not choose the herbs... And she she's gone. Right. So my point is, is since things could have been any other way, because it happened the way it happened. Yeah, but they so gave her overdose of other, chemo, babe. I, I hear mean, what you're you saying, know, but I mean, what I'm saying is, you're it saying, sound like it was time for her to go. It, no, it's look, That's what it we like. premature kill <laughs> ourselves prematurely. Why? By a belief in a system that is not designed to heal you. Uh, the choice came. What do you want? You want to take. The natural route, the route that right. you came in, or you want to take the route that you've been trusting and that got you where you at? Right. I'm going to take the route that I trusted in, and what happened? They killed me. Right, but I'm saying at that point, that person probably had already resolved to death. And so that that was the direction they took. Yes, ma'am. I have a physical thing. Balam and Balak. Y'all ever heard about that? No. And God told him not to go mess with the people. The priest kept coming and trying to open. You said who? Balaam and Balak. Balak. Balaam and Balak. Okay. So he, Jesus came to the spirit, came to him again and told him, don't go mess with them people. Let them come in. Those are my children. So he got, he toiled all night that night before. And he came offering him even more stuff in a high position. He went. And he went to try to stop those people. And I believe, you know what that is? When the mountains come yeah. close and go out, yeah. where it was like that. So the angel was standing ahead, and he was riding a donkey. They called it an ass in the Bible. Right. So he kept hitting and beating the ass, and he said, if I had my, uh, I'm going to say sword, but something 
to slay him with. Right. He was slammed. Right. So the ass butt his ankle against the wall. Mm-hmm. And then he got off to beat the animal. So the animal ran out in the field. Mm-hmm. And then uh, when when the angel revealed himself, he was waiting for him to come in that narrow court to slay him. The angel revealed himself. Mm-hmm. So my situation, what I'm trying to say is the choices that that lady had, she chose. She could have chose to go this way or that way, and she chose to go the way the angel was waiting to kill her. Exactly. She chose so the we wrong path. So have choices. The Holy Spirit do send people to us to help us. I've experienced that, and I'm telling you, you have to, that, that inner feeling that you get, the Holy Spirit still got you. But then you got to understand that we are spiritual beings. And if you don't understand that part, well, then we can't help Because mm-hmm. this body, that spirit leave out of me, this body going to drop to the ground. Mm-hmm. It's done. Mm-hmm. So then, again, why would you not listen to your own self that's telling you no? When your mind is saying, yeah, you know the doctor said the mind is going to tell you all the garbage that has been fed. Yeah, that's it. But your heart is telling you no. And it don't scream. It says it real soft. No. And we override that all the time. It screams sometimes. No, it don't. It don't scream. It mm-hmm. don't scream. Why? Because it's our choice. It never takes away that choice. It's for us to choose the path that we have already set for our feet. And when we choose a different way, death is right there to say, I, you know, I can take you now if I want to because you're in my territory. So it's all boils down to, again, our decision, the knowledge you decide to acquire, the trust that you have in yourself. I can't stress that more than anything else. It's about you understanding your place in this universe that we live in. You have a place. It's, you know, a lot of us get to the point to where we feel like, I, I don't, I, I'm nothing in this big ass world. You get on a doggone bus in the middle of a big city and everybody's on the bus. Don't nobody know you. You feel small. You don't, you know, you don't. If you're not connected to yourself, you will feel like you are not a part of what's going on when you're very much a part of everything that's happening at all times. And we have to understand that about ourselves. We come here with a mission. We circumvent our own way because of what? The lack of understanding, the lack of trust in ourselves. So then, when you don't trust yourself, somebody who looks like you, you ain't gonna trust them either because they don't know shit, I don't know shit. That's crazy. Because, like you said, a donkey saved him from annihilation. A donkey. So it don't matter what comes to help you. The wind could speak to you in a moment of desperation. You've got to be open to hear. We close ourselves off because we think we have all this knowledge, which is not knowledge, it's information. Knowledge is only relevant when you can apply that knowledge to your life and see results. If that knowledge is not applicable to being able to manifest results, then that knowledge is of no value to you. I mean, sometimes we have to go back to the basics. Elementary. Life is simple. It's simple. Simplicity itself. Who complicated? We do. By all the madness that we allow to go on in our head. The doubts. The, oh, I don't understand this. You don't want to understand because when we want to, the understanding is already in us. We don't have to look outside of ourselves. So, in all I said today, I'm saying trust in you. Mm -hmm. Trust in yourself. I feel like that's what we were saying on Tuesday as well. It all boils down to that. We're talking about our health. Yeah. The well-being of our expression on this planet. Mm -hmm. And it always comes right back in. Like I said, I have... 
I didn't know Pat. I love passion fruit. I love that flower. I love the fruit. I did not know about these leaves until oh, probably about a month ago. I and I heard about it, and I just really start researching it. And you know, I think it's even even deeper than that because we like passion fruit juice. Like we really like it, and we happen to get one because we make it, and um, we happen to get uh, like a concentrate. You know, just pure passion fruit. Um, With seeds in it, and it had seeds in it. And so I strained them, and I just dumped them in a pot, and they just, like, it just seemed like every seed sprout. Yeah, we All had. of them. And this pot about this big, about and eight inches. It was inch full pot. of passion. And fruit. it was just, and I told them, I said, I got to thin this out, because there's so many. I think they're going to, you know, overtake each other. So I, threw, I thinned them out. They wound up planting them around a tree, six of them. I think it's five or six of them around a tree you almost can't in see our the garden. Tree. And they are, they've overtaken the tree. The tree was dying, yeah, so I was really because they climbed. So I'm like, this is a good place to, you know, for them to climb up. And they did exactly what I wanted them to do. And they, I mean, it's a huge just See the passion leaf? fruit. That's the leaf. See, take a look. It's beautiful. Get and a I feel like it passion fruit <laughs> found us. And, you know, and wanted to expose herself and, you know, and wanted us to learn about her. Like, it just, just the way it came. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and it's so. funny because when I went to go get the leaf this morning, I mean, it's just, they just bundled up. Yes. It's, it's and beautiful. I had to search for leaves that wasn't eaten because the bugs be eating the heck out of it. I always say this. When you find something that the bugs like eating, you can know it's good because they was eating the hell out of these leaves. No, most of them are not eating. I don't know where oh, he was looking. I just came from the plant, babe. I had, oh this, I had God, to pick no. leaves off of this plant. Where I'm talking about, I ain't saying they're eating all the leaf off, yeah. but they eating the all. Yes, those red ants. eating on all. I mean, yeah. I was like, man, I got to find some that haven't been eaten on. Right. That was a challenge because they like it. Anything in nature is going to be nibbled on. So that's how you know you have an organic product, really. Yeah. How much time we got? Mm -hmm. yeah, about, about 10 minutes yeah. hey all right we're gonna take some questions so you can Y'all have any yeah or, or you know because we hear like i said about the state of our health and, and a lot of that is pivoted on how we think about ourselves we have to start allowing ourselves to share the harmful information because it wasn't a lot of, it was harmful information that have been pushed down our throats because it came to us we didn't say oh I want that no they shoved it down our throat constantly constantly giving it to us on at every angle they could so for us to be confused is not surprising well, what I will say is that it's not debilitating either. So we have a choice in the matter. We can choose to stop it all and start trusting in ourselves. I also want to add that it's the way we look at food. Food has been weaponized, particularly in the U.S. But we can't just like it. So food has become to people who aren't amenable to drugs or alcohol, another drug, you know, sugar should be a schedule one drug it really should be because it's taking more people out than cocaine and it is taking people out so food has been weaponized and we need to know that and we need to govern ourselves accordingly and so when you're putting something in your body and it, and, and then it's addictive you know and so people use and i and i, I use my mother's example who was incredibly christian i mean she was you know, I Holy call one of them Holy Ghost. You know, she was, you know, a, a super Christian. And, but everybody in the church was overweight. Everybody in the church was overweight. And I remember not liking that. And I'm like, why is everybody overweight? Well, it's simple. It's what we were eating in the church. You know, we hadn't transitioned really from slave food. We was on Sundays eating macaroni and cheese and fried chicken and this and that. And yes, it's delicious. 
And yeah, I'll still eat some macaroni and cheese and fried chicken. I just won't eat it every day. I just won't eat it all the time. You know, we just, you know, temper it, you know, so you can, you know, if it's something you like, you can have it without being gluttonous about it. Because when we see that food has been weaponized, we need to act like it. And we got to pull up. It's just like seeing our friend who's an alcoholic. And she's drunk all the time. And we be like, ooh, that don't make no sense. She's running around here and running. She need to stop. And the same thing with us. We need to pull up. You know, and be intentional, intentional about what we're eating. Couldn't have been stated better, babe. Is there any questions? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, really, because I be wanting no. people to ask questions that uh, that they might want to know yeah, about what the hell we talking about. Yeah, of course. Because people, you know, I I've been around enough people to know. We start talking, they go, "Well, I really didn't understand what you said when you said that." Da, 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 da. I'm like, "Well, damn, you took six months to ask me that dumbass question. You well, didn't understand when I told you." Shake Why wait so damn long? The delivery, <laughs> <laughs> guys. <laughs> I mean, for real, you know, you're like, come on now, let's yeah. let's 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 be honest with ourselves and yeah. not be afraid. It's like you have not, cause you ask not. Yeah. And then when you ask them, you ask them for some bullshit. And then I wanted to circle that back around to the menu here at Usha. So Usha is, you know, especially if we used to eat in a lot during the day, it's it's a shock, cause. It's two meals here and then herbs, you know, throughout. So you get one early in the morning, you get one about noonday, and then it's like, oh, okay, wait, 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 where's the rest of the food until 8 o'clock comes around again? But it really is, and it's, it's a good practice because then fasting goes on. It's, it's called intermittent fasting, right? So then fasting goes on from about noon when you finish your meal until the next morning and then your body has time to not just be working on digestion all day long and making sure it's moving the food down and, and distributing the food and da, 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 and waste and getting the waste then your body has time to look inward and work on things that are actually wrong it repairs itself it makes you realize the body is right. self-healing all you gotta do is cut yourself and watch it i mean don't cut yourself folks <laughs> Well, but that? you know, if you scrape yourself, <laughs> I mean, I gotta, you know, you know, if you, you know, scrape, fall, whatever, whatever, you see that the body say, you don't say, hey, scab, hey, do this, da 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 da, but you'll watch it go away. The body is self healing. When it really helps you to see that hunger is a thought. It's a thought, y'all. It's a thought. Just like every other thought, it's a thought. You don't have to accept that thought. Most of the time, when that thought comes, the first thing come out your mouth, I'm hungry. And then don't let it not be fulfilled. Then you get angry about it. Like, I'm hungry. People call it hangry. I'm hangry. No. You are out of control of it's your emotions. Thought. You are out of control of your emotions. And you got to put the body in check. Remember, this body doesn't run you. You run it. It works for you. Imagine a car saying on a full tank of gas or half a tank of gas going Fill me up again. I'm not going to go another mile unless you put some more gas in here. Imagine that. Yeah, that like, is the vehicle right of car. our body. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all. Have a nice weekend. Hey, I hope you guys enjoy yourself. I hope you enjoy the, our little Usha. I call it uh, Palapa Fire Pit Talk because we in the Palapa and they got a fire it's my pit. My first time hearing that. Oh, no. <laughs> it is my first time hearing that. <laughs> I thought about it when we got here. <laughs> That's the truth. Hey, hey, but any of you guys, because you know, a lot of places, the passion fruit grows. You'll see it growing on fences. Try the leaf, please. Try it. It ain't gonna hurt. Yeah. It can only help. Or okay. do some offline. Okay. We're going to dry some of these out and make them available on the store. Because it's, I mean, it's so many growing beautifully right here in Honduras. We're going to make them available for you. Because as we healing ourselves, we want to help you guys too. Right. Peace, family. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. <laughs>